This video provides guidance for the safe use of centrifuges. It is intended to supplement the formal instruction provided in each institution and each laboratory. This video is not a substitute for a safety training program. What does it look like when a centrifuge rotor fails? Not a pretty picture. Although personal injury is rare, damage to one's budget can be severe. Centrifuges are an important tool in the molecular biology lab, and they deserve to be treated with respect. Ninety percent of centrifuge-related failures are user errors. Careless centrifugation can mean lost samples or damaged equipment. It can also present a risk to the user and the lab. Every time one uses a centrifuge, one makes a series of choices. Which centrifuge, which rotor, which tubes and adapters, what speed, for how long. These choices can be critical for both effectiveness and safety. Centrifuges are designed to use certain rotors. Rotors are designed to be run up to a maximum speed with a load of a specific weight. Exceeding those limits invites trouble. If you are unsure of the rotor or proper tube size, consult the manual. This guy, you can spin like 12K. Ask an experienced colleague. To... Um, I have a question about spinning. Or call the manufacturer's representative. It's easy to take tubes for granted, but the correct fit of a tube in a rotor is crucial. Putting 600,000 Gs on anything that's not a perfect fit is going to lead to grief. There's another important choice one makes when centrifuging. What level of containment is necessary? Always choose aerosol containment tubes and rotors when centrifuging infectious materials. and load and unload in a biological safety cabinet. Even when working with non-hazardous materials, every step is critical in preparing a centrifuge run. Before placing the rotor in the centrifuge, make sure the bowl is dry and the drive spindle is clean. Avoid overfilling of tubes or bottles. Remember, in tubes used in fixed angle rotors, centrifugal force drives the fluid up the outside tube wall. Check to make sure the rotor is seated on the drive hub correctly. Balancing is critical. Half a gram difference is nothing at 1G but at 500,000 Gs, it's 250 kilograms, and that's another story. Don't overload beyond the rotor's maximum mass without reducing the rated rotor speed. When using a horizontal rotor, make sure all buckets are hooked correctly and move freely. Check O-rings on containers and rotor for cracks, nicks, or chemical attack. And don't forget to apply vacuum grease to the seals at least weekly. The most common user errors are failure to secure the rotor to the drive, to put the lid on the rotor, and to secure it. Double check to make sure the rotor is not being run beyond its rated maximum. Yes, it may be a boring task, but it's good practice to stay at the centrifuge until it's running smoothly at the desired run speed. When the run is completed, don't open the door until the rotor has come to a halt. 
always check for a possible spill, and if you find one, be sure to clean both centrifuge and rotor thoroughly. When working with infectious materials, wait 10 minutes before opening the door in order to avoid hazardous aerosols. If there's evidence of leakage or damage of any kind, close the lid immediately and carefully plan the cleanup. What all users of centrifuges fear most is rotor failure. Centrifuges and rotors are designed to withstand enormous forces, but the integrity of rotors can be seriously compromised by corrosion or fatigue. In aluminum rotors, Structural failure is most often caused by surface corrosion in the highly stressed areas of the rotor. Metal fatigue is an inevitable consequence of prolonged rotor use and will eventually cause any rotor to fail. Rotor failure doesn't have to happen if rotors are properly maintained and retired. Follow the manufacturer's instructions. Here are some general guidelines. Keeping the equipment clean and dry is critical. Wash immediately if spillage occurs or if salts or other corrosive materials have been used. Avoid harsh detergents or bottle brushes with sharp wire ends, especially when cleaning aluminum rotors, which are more susceptible to corrosion. Finish rinsing with deionized water. Make a habit of inspecting rotors. If there are rough spots, pitting, white powder deposits, or heavy discoloration, don't run the rotor. Have it checked by the manufacturer's representative. Eventually, every rotor must be retired, and as ultra rotors age, their maximum speeds must be derated. That's why it's imperative to keep diligent logs. An unlogged ultraspeed rotor is a ticking time bomb. Centrifugation isn't as simple as it appears. It requires careful use, careful maintenance, and careful bookkeeping. All the information needed is in the owner manuals or a phone call away. Find out. Don't let carelessness destroy your centrifuge. It may ruin your experiment, not to mention your day. <laughs>